throbs tonight. Kate Bush reveals why she ran naked into the Big Cats enclosure at Chester Zoo this afternoon. I like the small uh, baby lion. Hi, this is Wickfield. I think Naomi Campbell has a gravel fanny disorder. <laughs> Bainham is around tonight, but not quite at the moment. I sent him to the Gram Library to get Bruce Springsteen's The River on a liquid disc, so I don't think he'll be here for a while. <laughs> See, by the way, that uh, the Beatles are to release a new single. It's been recorded with John Lennon's voice. The other three Beatles are just playing along. Now, according to what I've been reading about it, to recreate the right creative atmosphere, McCartney wrestled with an imaginary John Lennon during the important moments. He said, I had to fight very hard to get my own way, he said in a statement he issued today on a farm. After heavy arguments with thin air, he was overheard in the corridor muttering stuff like, he's losing it, or trying to get the others to gang up on John. McCartney is, however, on record as saying, it was tough but worth it. For the first time, I really think I got the better of John. Ringo, for his part, said it was pretty weird to see Paul shouting at a mic stand and saying stuff like, look, I'll split the band if you don't watch it, or get that gook out of here. And uh, later in the programme tonight, Jeremy Paxman says why he prefers to watch party conferences from the Newsnight studio rather than attend in person. Because I like watching big tellies and you can see it better. Last record. No, here's today's feedback report number one. Right, sir. We're looking today at white face trouble. It does cause some difficulty, doesn't it? Yes, it does. What happens if you get a lot of white faced people with faces considerably wider than their shoulders overlapping and drooping down and so on in one place? I think they get aggressive. What would happen there? Well, maybe it's have a collision all over, wouldn't it? What, banging at the head level? Yes. Where would be the worst place for a large number of white faced people to conglomerate? In this sort of a cul de sac, you know, for. Facing which way? The blank end or the. Bl blank end. And if you were in a window, say, overlooking it medieval style, what, what, what would you see? Well, I get my panic a bit, you know. Panic turmoil? Yes, that's right. What about the ones at the front who are being crushed by the white faces coming up behind them? I think I, I just feel sad for them, really. Would you offer up a prayer? A prayer is that they are father. What about white faced children taking exams? What problems could happen there? Yes, that could be copying, you know, a bit cheating, really. You, that could look over the shoulder, you see. What, with the width of their face? Yes. What about a white-faced child on a bicycle? Well, uh, if the wind would rather maybe out to the road. Catch the face if it was too, too wide, but like an umbrella. What is a really bad width for a face? I'd say it's any more than three foot wide to be properly dangerous. And the ideal width for a face? I'd say two. Two? Two feet. Did you see the moral maze on TV? No. TV? No. It's, it's just one of those typical, typical TV transfers, an idea mm -hmm. nicked from radio. And uh, it's simply, you know, on radio it's kind of like a, a, a kind of tabloid argument dressed up in highfalutin terms and polysyllable words. That's basically what it is. Television, suddenly the argument vanishes and it just becomes body language. And there's Michael Burke just sitting there. It's a classic example of one of these things that they just nick for television. It's another reason why TV execs should, if they had any decency about them, would just wander off into the woods and never come back. And uh, on television, it's just... Well, I suppose it could have been... I mean, do you know what they did in the pilot? What? Well, they had this actual maze yeah. in the studio laid out like Hampton Court. And Michael Burke, who... Uh, suffers from a total lack of vertigo when it comes to holding the moral high ground, was telling them, was kind of overlooking the thing, and saying uh, things like, uh, Good, you take four paces towards good. And there was Hugo Grin, actually, on a raised lump of land in the studio, which was called the moral high ground. And there, at the end, like at the end of the radio show, he gave his sort of liberal, let's just try and understand everything, summary. And he gave it on the television pilot from a revolving luminous cross, a blue revolving luminous cross. And then the titles played out. Bloody hell. Yeah. Are you going to go out, by the way, and do some uh, driving information? Yeah, I'm giving tonight. driving yeah. advice, basically. Um, people have been finding about us already, haven't they? That's right, yeah. People are ringing up and uh, they're going to be asking me where to drive to. Uh, for example, just spoken to Bob Fashionu from Porth Call. He's got a Vauxhall Astra. I told him to drive to Middlesbrough at 45 miles per hour. And Susie Gautier Gilman, she lives in Sutton in Surrey. Uh, she's got a Peugeot 205, so I told her to drive to Chad. Uh, going at least a part of the way across some fields. Calls are coming through right now. If you go yeah. through to Studio 3... Studio 3? Yeah, you take okay, calls yeah. in there all the time, then yeah, come sure. back with an update about 20 minutes. See you in a bit. OK. Cheers. Thanks. 
So driving inquiries tonight with Peter Bainham. Phone up, say where you are, say what kind of car. Peter, the red light's Chris. on. Chris, can you please come through to the studio now, Why don't you please? get back to Studio 3? There are Chris, people calling up now with Chris, driving inquiries. Chris, please, Chris. What? Chris, there is a body in there. What the hell are you talking about? There is a body in Studio 3. Oh, yeah. Chris, I'm not yeah. bloody joking. A body? There's a body in Studio uh, 3. Who is it? I, I think it's Johnny Walker. Johnny Chris. Walker's dead in Studio yes. 3. Do you know what that shows? What? That shows if you're a DJ that still plays vinyl, you shouldn't share needles. It just killed Johnny Walker. Okay. Chris, okay, I'm not what? bloody joking. There is Johnny Walker oh, in there. What do you think dead? he died of? You think he took so many poppers his head fell out of his ass? Chris, I don't care. Look he... at me. Is that puke? Yes, it's puke. God, he's serious. Come on. Yes, come on. Fade up Studio 3. Fade up Studio 3. Can you fade it up when we go through? Jeez. What's that? Hang on, turn that tape off. Yeah. Turn it off. Yes, okay. Yeah, okay. Get those flies away from his head, I'll see if I can identify. It is Johnny Walker, look. Yes. He's lying yes. on the floor like an old sock. Johnny! He's Johnny, Johnny wake up! He's dead. Johnny! 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 Peter, stop snapping his face, he's dead! You'll snap it off! You'll slap his face off, he's dead! Peter! <laughs> Peter! <laughs> God, what do you do to his face? You sick! <coughs> Just cover his head up. What? Put this record sleeve on his head. Oh, what? Cover his head up, okay, he's dead! Okay. Oh. Okay. Now I'm gonna phone security. You sit on his head. I don't want him sitting up like some stiffs do. I'm going to phone security. Sit on his head. Yes. Sit on his head. Now it's covered in the sleeve and I'm going to phone security. Okay. I'll control room. Hello, can we have Johnny Walker's body removed from Studio 3 as quickly as possible, please? I beg your pardon? Yes, Johnny Walker's body removed from Studio 3 as quickly as possible, please. Sorry, Johnny Walker's... Body. Is there anything we should do now? I'm not... I don't understand. Can you explain the situation? Yeah, my name is... <laughs> and I'd like you to remove Johnny Walker's body from Studio 3 as quickly as possible, please. I'd appreciate your full speed. Johnny oh. Walker's body from Studio 2. As quickly as possible, please. Yeah, what? I mean, is the guy dead or what? Thank you very much. Sorry? Of course he's dead. Yeah, well, I, I'm sorry. I don't understand what's going on. Listen, on he's dead. Can you remove his body? Can you be as quick as possible, please? Just say yes. Yeah, I'll get in touch with somebody right away. Thank you. What did he say? Um, he said that we have to take the body through to our studio. What? He said that what? you've got to drag the body through to our studio. What? That's what he's what talking said. about. Yeah. So, Peter, listen, just drag the body through to the studio. No! Lek, you're in shock. Just do what you're told. Chris! Peter, a man's died. There are rules to follow now. Drag him Chris, through. Chris, I don't care. Peter, I'm not please, taking bloody. What? Peter, please drag dead Johnny Walker through to our studio. Oh! Just grab hold of his boot. Mind the spur. God Disentangle his head from the tape machine. Oh! And just pull him through. Go Don't on. dribble on him. Oh, thanks, Peter. That's great. That's great. It's not bad. That's great. Okay, Peter, just um, mm. bring his body in. Yeah. Let me say. You got rid of the flies. Yeah. It's, it's like, okay. Just put it down. Put it down in the chair here. Um, yeah. Please put it down yeah. in the chair. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing my best. <laughs> Oh, God. Did you hear that? Oh, what a horrible noise. Did you hear that? When you dropped him in the chair, some yeah. air came out of his lung and went through oh. his throat. You were saying, right, that yeah. he should be allowed to say goodbye to his fans. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a shame, but he can't, can he, really? I mean, well, actually, he can. What are you talking about? When I spoke to the security guard, he said that we had to punch a couple of holes in the back of his neck. What for? We've got to do that for the corpse. What do you mean do that? Uh, it, it, what's, it's, what's it it's for? It's procedure. So really? when, you, when you do that... Yeah. You can actually make him talk. How? Oh. I mean, All you need for him to talk, right, is air going across his vocal cords. Think yeah. about it. Yeah, but he's dead. I mean... Yeah. Punch punch the holes in the back of his neck. What, with this? Yeah. Go on. Just give work it. it. Go on. Give it here. Give it here. That's it. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. That's smell. right. No, no. That's it. Yeah. Just push it through. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, all you have to do is blow through the neck. No! And I'll move the mouth. What? 
blow through the neck and I'll move the mouth. This is disgusting. Just do it, Peter. You want him to say goodbye, it's your idea, now do it. Do you think this, this Just is right? Just do it. It's the best thing. It is the right thing to do, I'm telling you. Okay. So I'll move the mouth, hang on. Yeah. Yep. Alright. <laughs> now do that again. Just yeah. put, give, a, give a bit more breath. <laughs> Brilliant! That was amazing. You said goodbye. <laughs> Yay! Can we do it again? Yeah. Go on, go on, blow again. <laughs> nice that is one. Absolutely fantastic. Hey, look. God. Put that in his mouth. Okay. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wait a minute, what do about sit him on this thing? Wait a minute, no, this thing. Yeah, yeah right. okay, sit him on that. Right, put that there. Okay, let's ask him, Hal, let's ask him. Johnny, hold his head jo and wag it when I right, say, yeah. when I give you the thumbs okay, up. Okay. Do you want to sit on that? <laughs> okay, now okay. sit him on it. What, one <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Do that again. Enough. Enough's enough. And I'll tell you what, what? Why don't you scope up it?